Hey everybody, it's time for me to talk about the game that I am currently playing. As many of you may know, I have been working on a complete playthrough of all the Final Fantasy games, which is a lot. It's a lot. When I started this undertaking, I knew that it was going to be a lot, and indeed it is quite a bit. So, yeah, there's a whole bunch. <laughs> big ol' undertaking, and I'm currently on Final Fantasy VI, as you can see, which is also Final Fantasy III in the United States. Um, I do have an original copy of Final Fantasy III uh, for the SNES, but obviously we all know it's Final Fantasy VI because uh, 2, 3, and 5 didn't get released in the United States. Um, and so four and six were two and three in the United States. It's dumb. It, it's such a dumb thing. But, you know, at the time, they weren't wrong. Like, I don't remember a lot of people getting jazzed about turn-based RPGs, you know, which is really what made something a JRPG at the time, which is funny because a lot of the people that I knew who played RPGs, you know, people who played like, uh, man, I always hated the second Legend of Zelda game. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I had no patience for that game, and I'll play it again as an adult, and we'll find out uh, whether or not I like it more as an adult. But man, I hated that game as a kid. It, it just, it was too grindy, it was too same-samey, and like, yeah, as a kid, I did not appreciate the grind. As an adult, I don't know what happened uh, to me, but I now love grindy RPGs. The grindier, the better. Uh, so yeah, it is a whole problem now that I... Uh, can play those super grindy RPGs. Anyway, uh, so yeah, this one is uh, really something special, is true. So Final Fantasy VI, and I'm just going to dispense with all the Final Fantasy threes. like we're going to call it VI, because at this point I have played all the way through five Full Final Fantasy games so this is number six for me uh, so yeah it's Final Fantasy 6 I know what the cartridge label says it's Final Fantasy 6 anyway and also there are really good fan translations and whatnot and I guess like now uh, one of the things I need to tell you up front you are watching footage from the very beginning of the game um, I wish that I could have captured footage from later in the game, but I'm playing it on the Pixel Remaster because I have the Pixel Remaster uh, that allows me to play one through six um, and to play them in gorgeous remastered pixel styles uh, that just, it, it looks great, it plays great, it feels great. So, um, yeah, and in order for me to capture that, I could, in theory, capture it, but I would have to go digging in bins and finding, you know, adapters and whatnot, but I just, yeah, it's easier for me to capture it in emulation, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, but, yeah, here's the thing, is that uh, Final Fantasy VI came out at a magical time in RPG gaming, because America was really finally catching on to the turn-based RPG, uh, which really became a thing on the PS1, which was released, Final Fantasy VI was released in 1994. By December of that year, that's when the PS1 came out and kind of ended the 16-bit era and uh, ushered in a new era of gaming that was beyond bit, you know, because we know that we had the Nintendo 64 in that generation, but nobody really gave a crap that it was 64-bit 
uh, when we all knew that the PS1's graphics were better than the N64's and that the Dreamcast graphics were better than the PS1's, but the PS1 had more comfortable controllers and it could be argued and indeed was at the time that there were better exclusives on the PS1 than there were on the Dreamcast, which would be a fun debate to revisit, but like that's not for today. Anyway, so yeah, this came right at the tail end of the 16-bit RPG era. And, you know, we all know that people are very nostalgic for the 16-bit RPG era. The number of 16-bit styled RPG games that have come out. I mean, what does Octopath Traveler, Traveler look like? It looks like a very much glorified 16-bit RPG. That's what it looks like. People are nostalgic for this era. And if you look like uh 1993 secret of mana comes out 1994 final fantasy 6 comes out 1995 uh chrono trigger and so this is right in the sweet spot you may say the golden age of 16-bit rpg gaming and it really shows because having played all the way through final fantasy 5 which is a fine game don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed it, I had a lot of fun with it, but like, from the get-go, Final Fantasy VI lets you know that it's something different, because um, you're getting cutscenes the way that you never get cutscenes before um, in this type of game, and you're getting, like, uh, they're inserting in really interesting ways um, lore into the, uh, your understanding of this world that you're playing in because this is a world that is post magic. And so there's been a sort of industrial revolution. It's kind of steampunkish. Um, in, you know, you you start out in this magitech armor. So there, there's armored suits, which is awesome. I love armored suit games. Like, I love armored suits, I'm not gonna lie. Last night I was playing this while watching Voltron Legendary Defenders and I was having myself the best time. Like, I just, yeah. Uh, honestly, it, it could have been a scene from my childhood if only my childhood had involved better things. Uh, because my parents did not buy gaming consoles. They were like, no, we only buy things that are strictly for doing homework and whatnot. And then I would have to copy diskettes from friends and sneak games onto them. Uh, yeah. So why am I so obsessed with gaming now? Well, if you ever want to make a kid obsessed with something, forbid them to do it early on. And then they'll just be like, oh man, this is my jam. Um, anyway, regardless, the fact is that, um, yeah, there's, there's a pure and simple joy of playing the well-made games from this era, and there's a reason why so many people are nostalgic for this era of RPG gaming, because these are the games that really pushed what the hardware was capable of and really pushed what RPGs were capable of being at the time. And you can feel that from the get-go, you know, with the Magitech armor uh, that you're in, which, like, unfortunately, two things are true. Number one, I lost one of my characters partway through uh, due to simple negligence. I was just... You know, there's a creature where you're supposed to only attack its head and not its shell. And I accidentally attacked its shell when it was coming out of the shell. And I didn't get its head, I, I just got its shell again and the lightning bolt killed me. Uh, well, killed one of my guys, but it doesn't matter because those are like that entire portion of the game is uh, just a setup for you to figure out who you are and where you fit in this world. 
because the main character is this girl, yes indeed, female character, named Tara, who is born with magical abilities. The first person to have been born with magical abilities in a very, very long time, because this is a post-magic world. There had been this massive, like, uh, war of the Magi, and these espers were frozen away, and these espers are a way of, like, working with your magical power. Uh, they're also beings themselves. And so, yeah, it, it's a really interesting way that the game is put together. Very deep story, and it lets you know that right off the bat. But very much like many of my favorite games, it, uh, it doesn't make it too lore-heavy from the start. You know, the whole business about, like, there was a war and this happened and blah, 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 blah. You can skip that. <laughs> you can skip it. Um, which is fun because, you know, unskippable lore at the beginning of games, that's one of my least favorite things ever. It really is. I really don't like unskippable lore at the beginning of games. It's just tedious to get through, and it's always, like, uh, someone being too self-congratulatory of, like, I built a world, you know, it, it's just, it makes for less fun gameplay. But if you can weave it in as you're making your way through, which they do, um, you know, then you get the feeling that like, oh, I'm in a rich, full, vibrant world where, you know, every stone that I overturn is going to give me something new, something interesting, something uh, worth knowing about. And that is absolutely the kind of gameplay experience that I like. And so, yeah, it, it's a very engaging world from the start, and the characters have depth from the start. You know, the first time you meet Locke, he, he comes swinging in like, like Guybrush Threepwood from the Monkey Island series, and, um, well, actually less like Guybrush and more like, uh, what's her name? The girl one. The, the, that girl. You know the girl. Anyway. <laughs> uh, cause Guybrush is a little, uh, clumsy and the girl is kind of awesome. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, it is, it's a whole thing. Um, Elaine? Is that her name? Anyway. Regardless. Yes, Elaine. That is confirmed. I'm looking things up as I'm talking. Anyway, so... Yeah, it's, it's this whole thing where, like, these characters have character from the start, which is not... You know, I love it when pixel art is done well, and when uh, people are able to put character into visible pixels. You know what I'm saying? Where you can see the pixels, you can literally point to the screen and count up the pixels if you had to. Um, I could easily cross-stitch it, uh, because if you, if you can cross-stitch, just know this, cross-stitches, uh, the cross-stitch and the pixel is a one-to-one -one conversion. You can create any character from any video game with cross stitch. It's one of my favorite things that I've ever taught myself how to do. Anyway, so because I, I have a whole bunch of video game themed cross stitches, because of course I do. Anyway, regardless, we're well off topic. The fact of the matter is that this game brings charm and depth and intrigue from the start because you are this girl and you are in the clutches of the evil empire, you know, and you're in a Magitech armor, even though you have magical abilities and the guys talking about you are like, wait, isn't this the same woman who like wiped out a whole bunch of our dudes with like no problem whatsoever? And they're like, yeah, but she's got the slave crown on. So now she will do whatever we tell her. 
Anyway, uh, you're going to recover this esper that's been found in this mine um, by some people who are resisting the evil empire. And yeah, called, I think they're called the Returners. Anyway, uh, something to that effect. I, I may or may not be confusing them with the name of that group from the Brandon Sanderson series. I, I could be wrong. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that there's this underground resistance to the Empire. They found an Esper. The Empire finds out about it. They come to recover it. You are part of that recovery effort. But in encountering this Esper, it breaks you from the grasp of the evil Empire. You get picked up by members of the Returners and then, uh, you know, lock this guy who is, um, you know, He's a treasure hunter, he, but uh, people always call him a thief, and he's like, no, no, I'm a treasure hunter. Very different. Um, anyway, and the fact that you have all this character depth from the beginning, and then the Moogles come in to help you early on, uh, and you get to control and fight as Moogles early on, against like werewolves and woolly mammoths and stuff it's awesome like even in just the opening of the game it's awesome and i am about halfway through my gameplay of this game i just finished the ghost train segment last night for those of you who have played this you'd be like oh that part was awesome yeah it was because it comes out of nowhere and you're like what? How am I on board the train that ushers people to the other side? And then there's this whole touching part where one of the characters has family members getting on the train as you're finally getting off because you're trying to not be swept away to the uh, afterlife because you've still got stuff to do. And then, you know, like one of the and and this is a part by the way where your party is separated into three chunks and so you're each doing your own little portion of the story and this is the first time that that has really happened in a final fantasy game like this that i can remember i no, actually there was a portion in final fantasy 5 where you're split into two groups this one is you're, you're split into like three four groups and there keep being these like side quests and things that you can do um, as you're making your way trying to get back together as a party and you're picking up other party members along the way it's really really interesting and so I'm only halfway done with it but I am really loving this and I can really see why this game is head and shoulders above everything else that has come in Final Fantasy thus far. And I know, like, I, I've never played Final Fantasy VII, but I've watched people play Final Fantasy VII, and so I understand the appeal, and I understand why that game is so deep, and why it has been remade and remastered 17 times over in the last three years alone. Um, but yeah, I, it makes me excited for the future Final Fantasy series, um, knowing that like six is some people's favorite, seven is a lot of people's favorite, eight and nine, there are a ton of people who just love those games above any other RPG out there. So I'm excited to find out what those things are because I see this development. I see the people who are making these games getting better and better and better at their craft. And that is remarkable. Um, everything about this game, the music, the settings, the character design, the pixel art, you know, um, everything. The NPCs are more interesting than NPCs have been in Final Fantasy games up to this point. Everything about this game is an advancement, is a step forward in the development of this series. And it's, you, you cannot deny that it is improvement. 
It's improvement on something that was already quite good. And that is something remarkable. So yeah, I, I didn't even know how else to tell you that this game is incredible other than all of the words that I have said up to this point. Um, everything. Everything is, you know, a place for everything and everything in its place. It just feels like they thought of everything. And it just, it fits so well, and it's so well done, and it's so fun to play. And honestly, talking about it, it makes me wish I was playing it right now rather than talking about it, which I think I'll do. So let me put a final score on this, and then I can get back to playing. All right, so final score for Final Fantasy VI is going to be nine out of a possible 10 Voltrons, uh, because Voltron is just a standard measure of excellence, and this game is extremely, extremely excellent. Highly recommended. Very good. If you have not played it, this is the beginning of the absolute height of both the Final Fantasy series and it's smack dead center in the height of 16-bit RPG gaming. So it is at the crest of two really incredible waves in the world of gaming. So highly recommended. And yeah, that's going to do it for this one, people. I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.